let's talk about Windows window functions now. Window function is a new type of uh, functions. So we so far we have learned the row level function and the aggregation function. These two types of functions. And the difference between them is the input and output. For row level functions, the input is uh, one row at each time, and the output is one result for each row. So let's say you have a data set of 10 rows. You will feed a row level function one by one, one row at a time. And every time you get the output, for example, upper case, uh, upper function, you feed a row to the upper function, you feed the one cell in the row to the function and the get one output, which is the upper case of that value, right? And then you feed another. So for each row, you feed the row level function once, which is the one row as the input of the row level function. And then the output is a result corresponding to this input row. So it's a one in, one out. Aggregation function, however, will get the input from many rows. For example, if you, have, if you are talking about a sum function, you are getting a sum of 10 rows in this data set, and you are outputting only one. So this output one sum corresponding to this 10 rows. All 10 rows is a one input, one input. The input of 10 rows, 20 rows, a thousand rows, whatever rows you have in the data set generates one output. This is an aggregation function. You have 10 rows, you get one sum. You get 20 rows, you get one sum. When you get 1,000 rows, you also have only one average, right? So this is how you define aggregation function. Sometimes there's a, the usage of another type of functions, which is the Windows functions. Windows functions will still receive a set of rows, a bunch of rows as an input, then it will return one value for each input row. So you have a 10 rows, right? The Windows function should receive all 10 rows as the input, but it will also output one value corresponding to each input row. This a typical, a typical example is like rank. For example, uh, a stock price. Stock price, let's say we have a one day and we have 50 stocks. We're going to get this stock price, feed it into our rank function and sort them. And then each row, each price, will have a separate price level. Now I don't I don't know the stock price. Let's just assume Amazon is the is the most expensive one, followed by Apple. Then Amazon will be assigned one. Apple's two, maybe Google three, Microsoft is four, et cetera, et cetera. All these 50, each has a one value. However, just because the output is one row, uh, one result per row, doesn't mean that it's a row level function. Because when you calculate this function, you need all 50 prices in order to calculate the rank. So for the Windows function, the input is the data set. It is uh, multiple rows, which is called window. And we will see why it's called window later on when we have an example. Um, when you feed this window of values of rows into the function, it will generate output for each row. Each row will have a separate value result. The difference between Windows function and the new row level function of course, is the Windows function will require the input of a set of data, a set of rows, not just one row. But the same, but the, these two are same in the sense that both row level function and the Windows function will output one value for each input row. Comparing Windows function to aggregation function, both require the input of a set of data, multiple rows. But uh, when you consider the output, Aggregation function only output one value for the, uh, for the data set, whereas the Windows function will output one value for each row, each input row. So Windows function, let's, let's look at an uh, example first, stock ticker, right? Stock ticker is one of the most, uh, stock price is actually one of the most 
useful example of Windows function. So this is a stock price, Apple, Amazon, Google, J and J, Microsoft. I only pick five, five, five tickers. And I only picked uh, so from January 2nd, 2020 to September 1st, 2020. But as you can see, each have a close, have a low, have a high, have a open. And uh, when you try to consider in one day, prices in one day, you can see that I'm looking at, for this time, I have uh, one day, for a second day, I have another day. For third day, I have another day. This is why it's called window. It looks as if you are opening a window in this immense data set. You're opening a window, only see this portion, and this window can glide up and glide down. When I go back to earlier days, January 2nd, then this window goes up, slides up. When I move down to January 7th, this window moves down, right? So this is what, why it's called window. Within this window, you have a rank. This may be one, this may be two, this may be three, four, five, right? So inside this window, you have the Windows function applied and uh, giving you the rank, giving you the order, or giving you some, something else whatever you want. Windows function will return one value for each input and the set a window. As we see the window, you can clearly see that you want to also, you want to, first of all, want to partition. You want to separate the window from the rest of the data. This is when you need the partition by. Now you can partition by multiple, uh, multiple multiple uh, attributes. Of course, the first one right now, what we are seeing is partitioned by time or date. Here it's called timestamp, but it's actually a date, right? So first day, uh, first day, second day, third day, fourth day, right now it will add the fourth day of trading in 2020. Each one is a window and these windows are separated from others by the, by the partitioned by attribute, which is the date, tra the, the trading date. Now, what if I want to change? I can always change the partition by, right? If I decide to change to partition by ticker, You can see that I'm actually only seeing Apple first and uh, followed by others. The last one will be Microsoft based on alphabetical order. Within Apple, you can see that this is a big set of data, right? Big set of uh, ordered data. So now, so I used to partition by time step by date. Now I'm partitioned by ticker and by different participate uh, by partition the data differently, I can do different analysis. If I partition by date, I can check the highest price in the day. I can check the order of prices. If I partition by ticker, which means it's the price each, within each window, it's a price of one particular stock, then I can perform other analysis. But the most useful one, of course, requires some time series analysis, which is what we call order by here. I'm going to order, as, I, as you can see just now, I already ordered, ordered the, the data by date. So now I can see we have a range of five days, a range of seven days. Each one is a window. Uh, this is defined by, uh, you can have a size of window. You can have an unlimited size, which, which means inside this partition, all data inside this partition, all the trading data uh, of this ticker is under is in your window and you will calculate everything, standard deviation, uh, sorry, not standard deviation, it's a, 
uh, you can calculate everything like the highest price within this eight months. You can calculate the highest, uh, lowest price within this uh, eight months. You can also have a range, like when you do a stock analysis, a very common usage of a range uh, of a window is a moving average, five-day average. What's the price? Or, or recently, when we have the COVID-19 pandemic, a very important, um, a very important indicator of how serious the, the pandemic has been going is the seven-day average. Seven-day average means in the past seven days, um, today plus six days before us, right? What's the sum of this seven-day uh, or average of this seven days total? So this is the range. Size of window is seven day. If each day is a row, then it's a seven rows. So. This is an example. Um, like if I want to see if this is a uh, registration, you are rank over order by tuition and the partition by student name. That means you will break the registration table into multiple students. Each student is in one window, right? Then within that window, you are ordering by actual tuition. Thus, you will see for this student, what's the highest price of his, uh, his or her course? Um, what's the lowest price of his uh, course? And with the rank, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you want to calculate a moving average or moving sum, then you will specify the range as like rows between something and something. This starting can be unbounded preceding, can be Maybe if a seven day average, it will be six preceding. If it's a five day average, it will be five preceding and current row. This three can be like a starting, starting value. Or for ending, it can be current row. It can be values following, how many days are following, how many rows following, or unbounded following means it goes all the way to the end. If you have a rows between unbounded preceding and unbounded flow, following, that's the default. That means you are including every data in the partition in your window. So some examples of uh, Windows functions you may be interested in. Uh, row number, um, rank, and dance rank. What does uh, rank and dance rank mean? Um, rank is basically one, two, three, four, five, right? But what if there is a tie? Let's say there are two number ones, then the third one, is that a two or is that three? In the rank situation, it will be one, one, three. It will be one, one, three. So if there's a tie in the rank, then the following rank will be, will be starting from all accounts above. The third one is still third one. It's not going to be second one because there are, there's already two on top of him or her. Dance rank, on the other hand, only counts the rank of the value. So the rank counts the row. Which rank is this row in? It's the third rank. Even though the, two, the first two are, uh, are the same, the third rank is still the third rank. If the third row is still the third row. But if you are, dance rank counts the value, it's uh, going to, if the first two are tied, one, one, the third value is sex still the second value. The third row holds the second value. So it will be one, one, two. That's how dance rank it, uh, works. Then we have n tile percent rank, like the, these are like uh, some specific functions that you will use when you are using your statistics. So they, will, they are important, but their usage is similar to rank and dance rank. So we are not going to cover how they work here. And you can also use the, the traditional sum, average, minimum, max. These are more useful when you have a moving average calculation. For example, you want to check the sum, uh, like I said, seven day, uh, seven day case number of a COVID it will be a sum over a range of uh, six preceding and the current row, right? If you want to calculate the five-day moving average of a stock price, it will be the sum, the average uh, closing price 
of uh, four proceeding and between four proceeding and the uh, current row. So these are like for moving average. So quick fun summary of a function. You have a row level function. You can get value of one row and uh, you can get the input from one row and the output one result for each row. Aggregation function will get the input of um, several rows, but only will output one result for all these rows, for all this input. Windows function, however, will get the input of many rows, many rows, but then it will output one result for each input row, right? And finally, as we are talking about rank, uh, I also want to tell you something about limit. So you will use a limit n to tell DBMS how much rows you want to return. I'm going to show you an example of this. So a lot of times when you run a query against a large table, maybe a thousand, a 10,000, 1 million, you don't want to see all data. A lot of times you just want to see a sample, a small sample like 50 rows or 100 rows. In that case, you can use a limit, limit n uh, class after everything, after you can, you will have all the regular select from where and uh, order by. After you have the order by, you can add this limit and maybe limit 50 or limit 100 to tell uh, DBMS, you only want to see the 100 rows returned. So you only want to see 100 rows. You don't need to see all of them. Now, this is interesting because uh, the limit itself does not apply ranking, does not apply ordering. But if you put this together with order and or combine this with window functions, you can get some interesting result. If I order the, the data set by, let's say, uh, the date, then I have required to limit the five, then I'm going to get the, five, the first five days returned, right? So these are the things that you may be using with the limit. But now let's look at DigiAdmin. Um, so, but so this is the stock. Uh, this um, this is still the Google Sheet I have for a stock ticker. But uh, what I'm telling you here is I have already dumped this into SQL, and uh, I have already created tables stock into stock price. I'm going to give this stock price uh, scripts in the, in the course documentation so that you can run as a part of our lab and assignment. Now, first, let's take a look at a limit. How many rows do we have from stock price? Uh, 845, this is probably too much if I want to bring them, right? But what if I just only want to see? First five rows. See, this is the first five rows. And the uh, first five rows is five first five rows because it has to be um, inserted. That is so all starting from Amazon. But now what if I combine this limit with order by? I'm going to order by timestamp and then ticker. What does this give us? It gives us for each day you, and for each ticker. I, I know that I have only five tickers in this data set. So if I do a order by 25, What's going to give it? Uh, what's uh, what does this going to give me? It gives me the five days value of uh, five tickers. Oops. Sorry, not all the by limited. Now that you can see, it's a first day of five of a five ticker. 
Second day of five ticker, and it returns 25 days, which is five, uh, 25 rows, which is the five day values, five day data set for these uh, five tickers, right? So this is how you can use the limit. And uh, when you be creative, you can really see a lot of things. Now, let's look at a Windows function. What if I want to see the top price of each stock? Right, I'm actually seeing the rank here. I'm already defined the rank. This rank is partitioned by ticker and ordered by close is descending, which means for each ticker, I will have one window. And within this window, I'm going to order by close, closing price, highest first. So what I, I will expect to see is for Amazon, I'm going to see one, two, three, four, uh, a rank value for one, two, three, four, based on the price, highest first, then for Google, then for Apple, et cetera, et cetera. Each stock, each ticker will have the window of uh, closing prices with a rank one, two, three, four, five. But eventually, once I finish this rank, I'm going to output an order. You can see this Amazon, one, two, three, four, and I'm ranking this by closing price. So this is Amazon and uh, now it's Google. Now, one thing to note here, and this is because you are seeing that we are ordered by ticker. We are actually ordered by ticker here, right? We are defining this ordered by close, not by ticker. And uh, the reason that Amazon shows first, all Amazon data shows first, followed by Google, is just coincidence because Amazon's price happens to be much higher than the others. So all Amazon's price comes first. But um, one thing to note is the order by here is different from order by here. Order by here only affects the value in this rank, whereas the order by here in, will affect the, the order that shows up here. So the first order by affects the value of rank. The second order by, the order by of a SQL affects the display. If I do a two here, order by two first, order by timestamp first, followed by ticker. What you are going to see, you can see that these are not the most except, uh, highest ranked one, right? They are not the lowest either. Instead, it's ranking, it's ordered by timestamp followed by ticker. But the order by here, the order by description will impact the price rank. This price rank is based on the closing price order. That's what this order is about. Now let's look at five-day moving average, right? We have a four or five-day average of closing price here. And we will partition by a ticker. Of course, this has to be partitioned by ticker because we are calculating the moving average. The second one is ordered by timestamp. So we are going to have an average of five days or five rows because each day, each row, each day is a one row. So five day average means five row average. And these rows must be ordered by the date. So it will be for proceeding and the current row. Now let's take a look at Apple. Uh, let me expand this so you see the whole number, right? And you can see the first one. For the first one, the average, the moving average is actually the same as before. Why? Because we're doing an average. When there's no proceeding, when this is the first row and there's no proceeding, what uh, does SQL consider? So you consider the previous four as now. Because there's a now, the average of four now and the one value is still the value, the same value of 300, right? The second one, the average 298, if you calculate that, it will be the average of these two because this is a second row. So we have two rows plus three now. And similarly, 
289 is the average of these three. 289 is the average of these four. And finally, we have this average of these five. Okay, now let me bring up the Google sheet of stock price. And uh, this is the Apple, right? So you can see this is the five day data. And if I choose the average 299, A32, right? Which is exactly the value. Now, how about the next window? The next window will be September, will be January 9th, plus four preceding, right? So it will be starting from 297 till 3909. The average is 301688. And this is what we get. And uh, one last try. The moving average of uh, January 10th, it will be from 299 to 310. And average is 304. That's exactly what we get. So this is the rolling, the moving average, five-day moving average, or sometimes people call it the running average or rolling average. Anyway, as long as you get the point, um, it's a five-day means the four proceeding and uh, the current value. 